Welcome to Government Connection. I'm your host, Miguel Ortega, and today we'll be talking about the Census Bureau. Uh, we'll be talking about the Bureau and how it's gearing up for the 2010 Census, and we're going to be learning more about the constitutionally mandated event as we welcome our guest today. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome Angel Rocha, uh, who is a Thank partnership you. specialist with the Census Bureau. Angel, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and Jesse Nino, uh, who is the local Census Office Manager with the Census Bureau. Welcome. Thank you very much. And you know, I remember as a kid, uh, whenever I heard about the Census, I, I just imagined one person counting every single person. I always thought, you know, how is that even possible? <laughs> uh, but you all know that there's a system to it, there's a process, and there's a history and culture to it. And I think it's very important that we are uh, talking about this today because so many folks depend on the information that you find out about the census. A lot of folks don't know. It's, it's much more than just counting folks. Uh, we depend on a lot of, uh, on, on what these numbers tell us to, to um, discuss programs and that kind of thing. And I want to let folks know who are watching, we'll be conducting this uh, interview in both English and Spanish so that folks who uh, do speak Spanish will benefit from some of the important information that we'll be providing today. So I want to talk first a little, uh, Angel, about how long the United States has been conducting the census and how, and how it's changed over the years. What's been the history of it? Well, I was like you before I started uh, working with the census and especially in this transition, uh, getting ready for 2010. I'd seen people come to the door and, you know, ask and uh, fill out the forms and so forth. But um, finding out the history of it, it really opened my eyes to what it is that, that, we're, that we're gearing ready for and getting ready to do in the history. Uh, we started doing the census back in 1790. Wow. Uh, the U.S. Census is one of the oldest, long-lasting uh, uh, departments within the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. uh, they started doing the census actually from home to home. The uh, uh, sheriff would actually go and knock, and they would knock on the doors and find out how many people live there, and they would continue and to the next house, neighborhood to neighborhood and co community to community. Uh, they continued to do that up into through the 1800s. Um, they gathered a lot of information and it kind of became irrelevant at that point once the 19th, 1900 came around and they decided to kind of tone it down a little bit. And ever since then, but throughout that time actually, the reason why it was relevant is because of technology. The information was relevant, but we couldn't get the information out to the communities fast enough. So due to technology and the advances that we've made, uh, some of those questions, whether it's economics or uh, 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 demographics and so forth, those things that, that we need uh, for our communities to understand, it's the DNA of our communities. Mm -hmm. And we, they've been doing it for a while, and they, they, they do a pretty good job. And has it always been in 10-year periods? Yes. Even from the beginning? Yes. Uh, every 10 years, the census is done. And they do that for uh, disbursement of funds and for all that information to go out, yeah. And redistricting and that kind of thing? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, Title I funding, mm -hmm. um, as far as for school districts, uh, WIC, uh, some of those different uh, community involvement uh, efforts, uh, uh, food bank, local food banks as well, roads, um, construction, Tucson would very know that very well with I-10. Um, school districts all over. Uh, they also do it for county hospitals. Uh, if, the, if they know the population within a certain area and they know that, that hospitalization needs to happen, then that happens as well. So there, so there is a, even though we are used to say uh, every four years or a couple years we, we elect our congressmen or our council members, with the 10 years it's, it's possible that folks, you know, uh, back at th that time would say, oh, wow, I, what is this again? What does this count? Uh, some folks might be born in within time. and uh, it, it is an effort to try uh, to gather up all the support again every 10 years. These, the census is continually doing censuses. Mm -hmm. it, it, but if that's a proper word to use, censuses. Right. Uh -huh. But 
Um, or sensei or something. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, we're, we're every year annually. Right. Uh, they're doing different sense. Every five years, er, if a year falls on a two or a seven, uh -huh. that's the economic census, ah, which we just got do, doing in 2007. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That doesn't distribute funds. The only census. Uh -huh. Uh, that distributes federal funds uh -huh. is the census that is done every okay. two, every yeah. ten years. And we're going to get to Jesse. I have a question for you, but I want to check out this video first. This little piece that's going to tell us a little bit more about the census. So if we can take a little peek at this uh, at this piece, it'd be great. On April first, twenty ten, our nation will be counted. Every person whoever they are, wherever they live. And what we learn will transform what we know about ourselves. The 2010 Census, it's a new portrait of America. The 2010 Census is an exciting milestone for America. It promises to deliver accurate information about our diverse and growing population and it's important for the future of every community. Census data will be used to allocate over $300 billion in federal funds every year. The 2010 Census will be important to the nation because it is the foundation of our democracy. The Census, no matter when it is, is the consummate partnership between local, state, and federal government. Communities use the data to plan for their future like disaster and emergency services, health care services, schools, transportation, libraries, senior centers, and more. The 2010 census builds on the success of previous censuses and is the best planned and most well-researched census ever. And innovations, like a new short census form, will help to make it even more successful. The 2010 census, it's easy to complete. Data are always confidential and safeguarded. It's important. This census is a commitment to the American way of life. To be counted as a resident of the United States, I think is one of the proudest things that can happen to you in this country. It's important, stand up for yourself, be counted, let people know you're out there. The 2010 census. It's a new portrait of America. A photograph, a time and place, a picture holds, a moment space, portrait. Welcome back to Government Connection. We'll talk, we're talking about the 2010 U.S. Census. And for those folks who are uh, tuned in now, uh, we just want to let you know that we'll be conducting some of the interview in Spanish as well. Así es que bienvenidos. Vamos a hablar un poco sobre uh, the 2010 Census. Y vamos a hablar un poquito de los detalles en un momentito. Pero I wanted to uh, turn now to Jesse Nino uh, to talk a little bit about um, how the census affects everyone. We saw in the piece, uh, there's a lot of a broad section of folks, uh, very diverse uh, uh, people in this piece, and and um, and it just made you think, you know, well, how does this work for all the different folks, different ages, di different ethnicities? Uh, tell us a little bit about that, Jesse. Well, the federal law protects information for everyone, which makes it safe. Um, there's we're bound by Title 13 of the U.S. Code that none of the information will be given to anyone that is not uh, with the U.S. Census Bureau. It's private information that w will never be published. Uh, there's 
are no names, no addresses, no social security numbers, no phone numbers that's given out with any of the statistics that are um, given out there. Uh, each of us that are with the U.S. Census are sworn for life uh, to protect your confidentiality and everyone else's. Uh, it's a violation of the law. If we do uh, provide any information, we can be fined up to $250,000 and or our imprisonment for five years. Uh, we have, um, again, sworn uh, for life that none of the information will be given out to anybody. We depend on the cooperation and trust of everyone that is out there, and we promise to protect the uh, confidentiality of everyone. There's also some other promises that I would like to share with you and everyone else is that uh, when needed, you know, we decide whether we need to ask that question or not. We promise to collect only the information that is necessary for each survey and census. We promise that we will use the information only to produce timely, relevant statistics about the population and economy of the United States. We promise to inform you uh, and about the purpose and uses for every survey or census we conduct before you provide your answers to us. We promise to minimize the effort and time it takes for you to participate in the data collection by efficient designs. We promise to use only legal, ethical, and professional accepted practices in collecting data. We promise to ensure that any collection of sensitive information from children and other sensitive populations does not violate federal protections from research participants and is done only when it benefits the public good. Okay. We also promise that every person with access to your information is sworn for life to protect your confidentiality. And we promise that we will use every technology, statistical methodology, and physical security procedure at our disposal to protect your information. Well, that, that, that should certainly make folks feel very uh, uh, confident and secure in, in that uh, their information is being used for uh, an important purposes and nothing else, and confidentiality would be honored. And I think it's also probably very important for us to make this, uh, these key points in Spanish Uh, so that I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Los que están mirando ahorita que hablan en español solamente, lo que acabamos de hablar un poquito sobre eso, eso que, que pues toda la información que le da a uno, ¿verdad? Uh, es completamente confidencial. Uh, este, este, protejan el, uh, la, tu, su información y lo, solo estamos pidiendo información para, para usarlo para, para beneficios y programas, ¿verdad? You know, and I'm just thinking now, how do you say census in, in Spanish? <laughs> El Censos? El Censos sounds good to me, well, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it's important that folks understand that, you know, so I really appreciate that you, you're listing that. And Angel, uh, what, what are some of the barriers uh, or challenges facing the Census uh, uh, 2010? We obviously, I think, touched on the language barrier, but what are some sure. of the other barriers that we should consider? Um, some of it would probably a little bit uh, overlap with what Jesse had mentioned with privacy. Mm -hmm. um, 2008, a lot has happened in this decade. Um, fear, fear of government, uh, fear of privacy, and um, fear of just the economy and so forth. Um, it, it, there's, there's a lot of that going around. Some of the barriers that, that we've had to face, especially here in Arizona, um, had to do with some of the privacy issues. Um, I just want to throw out a couple of situations that have happened in the past, just to kind of put the privacy aspect tangible, make it to connect. Uh, in 1961, Uh, there was a law passed by Congress to further secure uh, the fears of, of the people in reference to the census. And what that law did was that law allowed uh, the census to keep the, the actual survey itself uh, that if I, let's say I had it as a census employee and I had a form that had your personal information, that form could not be utilized in any way in a court of law against mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. See, that was prior, where it was just the federal employee. Mm -hmm. But what Congress did is they up or, 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 or superseded that, and they allowed, they, they passed a law that if you were caught 
with that, with let's say you were pulled over, some situation, uh, that that form was in your hands and you had other house, other individuals in your household, that form could not be used in the court of law mm -hmm. against yourself or anyone else in your home mm -hmm. for any, any particular reason. Mm -hmm. Census information is completely confidential. So let me let me see if I could just to, just to impress upon the, this this point to, to folks that are watching. Uh, uh, so if a person were to be undocumented, the family were to be undocumented, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, someone from the Census Bureau came and and uh, uh, asked questions and they participated, that particular document that's used to get that information could not be used against them in the court of law to to deport them, say? No, okay, not at all. That okay. information is not going to be given to anyone other than staying within the census for statistical matters. You know, it's not going to be used uh, for any law enforcement, immigration, mm -hmm. no one is going to get that information mm -hmm. and that is a barrier that we will be facing later on mm -hmm. you know, along the whole southern border of Arizona. Mm -hmm. Entonces, para aclarar, eh, si una, una familia este, no tiene papeles, no está documentado, y viene una persona del censo para hacerle preguntas y, a, y apunta toda la información que le da, esa información por ley que fue pasada por el Congreso no, puede, no se puede usar para... Um, Uh, para regresarlos para, para atrás para su, su país. No, no se puede usar ligamente a, a contra usted, ¿verdad? That's that, that, that is correct. Okay. I, I, even further, there was a time where that was attempted. Mm -hmm. It was 1980. It was actually uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Mm -hmm. The FBI went to the local census office, demanded all of the census information. Mm -hmm. And the, there was a local census employee that actually held off the FBI agents until upper management could arrive and resolve the situation. Mm -hmm. But the documents were never handed over. It, mm -hmm. it, it can't happen. Even President Truman attempted it mm -hmm. uh, during his administration. When they were doing relocation off, out of the White House, they were doing remodeling and they wanted to remove him to a different location. They said, can we get census information to do background checks? of the individuals that live in that area. Mm -hmm. And the information would not be released and they had to move Truman to an, uh, uh, another designated area where there was no one around wow. while they did remodeling for the White House. Well, that certainly underscores the integrity yes, uh, uh, of the correct. process. And Jesse, so let's, let's say that there's folks that are ready and willing to participate uh, and they understand that their privacy is gonna be respected and they wanna do their, 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 um, their duty. In, in many ways, you can see it as a, as a duty to, to, your, to your country. But there's just one little thing, you know, and I think it's probably true for all folks who are uh, getting ready to go to work or, or they have kids. Um, how long does this take? How, how, how long of a commitment uh, should folks expect when answering these important questions? It's very easy for them to uh, accomplish filling out the survey. There's 10 questions. It may take 10 minutes. It's very simple and easy, so, you know, there's, really not very much time for anyone to complete the survey. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the only way it would take longer is if something else, some interruptions or anything like that, but really generally about 10 minutes, huh? That's what yes, it would take. Yes, unless you know, they don't want the employee you know, coming into their home or even if they were to answer them, you know, the questions outside the door, uh -huh. it's a matter of how much time they want to give them unless they're just not letting them ask the questions. You know, it's funny, and I, and I did some surveying uh, on another matter years and years ago in my college days, and I remember there was some folks, some uh, of our, our, our tias in the, in the neighborhood, in the barrios, mm -hmm. uh, would sometimes would come in and they say, hey, you know, sit down, would you like a little bowl of some menudo, is there anything, you know, <laughs> and, and would befriend me, and I remember that that was kind of a challenge, a good challenge in that the hospitality That's is right. just, it, it culturally is, is, uh, is part of some folks' lives. And you know, with that, there are some other barriers that we're gonna have, uh, like gated communities. Uh, mm -hmm. The people may not want someone coming in the gated communities asking questions that don't belong there. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna have to work with that as far as uh, hopefully getting individuals that actually live in those communities to accept jobs and try to. And how would you get around that? Would you talk to the homeowners association to allow for folks to come in or how do you? Either that or we, uh, again, we'll have individuals that hopefully live within those gated communities and they will be able to perhaps talk to the homeowners. 
-hmm. or even put up on the board that this is the day that we're going to have the census. This is who's going to actually be out there, perhaps even at a specific time that they're going to be out there doing the census. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. we, we do that specifically, um, like for instance, in some of the Native American communities, mm -hmm. that we have to let them know when we'll be stepping on tribal lands, uh, to notify them that we will be there. Also, one of our responsibilities is to create partnerships with local government or say, what we call safe voices or ambassadors in a community. Uh, people that are in the community that are trusted voices that can uh, beyond what I could do or what Jesse could do. These are individuals that the community trusts, a, a, a pastor, a priest, uh, someone like that that can get the word out uh, to let them know of what we're doing, the safe, that it's safe. Right. And the fact that it's, it is how important this is to the local community. I'll throw out just a number, then we can move on. Mayor Walkup told us this number. There's not a number we gave, but this is something he, he told us in our meeting with uh, City of Tucson. He said the, the amount of funds that come out every year that is allocated towards this, from the census to the community, to the City of Tucson, is $1,300 annually wow. per individual. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you count that over 10 years. That's what the city of Tucson is 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 looking at wow. in in income. As That's far, in services and programs yes, and that kind of thing. Okay. Per individual. Huh. So this is what I tell local governments or even just anyone at a PTA meeting: if you don't have thirteen hundred dollars to write a check, just fill out the form. It's that easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. Mm -hmm. That's a really really good point. I wanted to make sure also to make a point in Spanish uh, that uh, we. Uh, that this solamente es, dura como 10 uh, minutos la entrevista. Así es que si eh, solo que usted invite para, para una, un menudito o algo así, solo debe de durar 10 minutos. Así <laughs> es que no es muy, no es muy, uh, uh, no, no toma mucho tiempo. And uh, there's also wanted to uh, uh, provide the website for the U.S. Uh, census. Uh, we should be putting that up on the, on the screen there so that you all can get a little bit more information. And it looks like it's the, uh, uh, it's, there was a, there's a number, toll free number, one eight Six six eight six one twenty ten, and the address there one East Congress, and the website here, uh, the website here is census twenty ten dot gov. Again, it's census twenty ten dot gov. And I wanted to also invite you to tune into Government Connection next week. We're going to be talking actually to a, a, a friend of mine, Lillian uh, Lopez Grant, uh, a little bit about the Mercado San Agustin a project, and uh, and that'll be the December tenth at six p.m. PM, as you see there, the, the, we're talking about the developers and neighborhood association and, and how they've worked together to, um, uh, to put on this uh, great event, uh, Mercado San Agustin uh, project. So tune into that. Again, that's December 10th at 6 p.m. And again, we're, we're, you're watching Government Connection. We're talking about the U.S. Census. And great information. This is some really wonderful stuff. You wanted to jump in there? Yes, sir. I, I would like to also add that um, what would help instead of the listers or enumerators coming door to door is there's going to be mailings for these questionnaires going to all the homes mm -hmm. and if that mailing is not sent back if it's not returned which you're going to get a self-addressed postage uh, envelope to send that back if you don't do that another mailing is going to go out so you'll have two op two opportunities to return that if it's not done that's when someone's going to be coming and knocking on your door. Oh, I see. Okay. So, you know, and that's what's actually going to cost, and that's where we're going to get all the applicants, you know, all the workers going out there to do that. So, mm -hmm. if the mailings are actually done as they should be, you have two options, two opportunities, then no one will then be no coming come, to your door. Come, come to your door. So it's a great, it's kind of a vote by mail type of <laughs> a, approach. So that's a good thing to know. We're running a little short on time. We only have a few minutes left. But Angel, if you could just briefly tell us about how some ordinary uh, citizens can become involved. Folks who are watching right now are saying, hey, you know, I'd like to be a part of this, this effort. Going through the communities, I, I travel through all the different cities here in southern Arizona. And I've had that question a lot. How can I get involved? M one of many, many ways uh, is... Ask your local city government, are they particular, are they involved? Have they established a complete count committee? Um, asking their, the principal at the local school, do you know if the district superintendent is involved or partnering with the U.S. Census mm -hmm. because of Title I funding for the public schools? Uh, right now, we're at, you know, as far as we're, look, we're need, also looking at filling in job positions. We are going into what we call address canvassing which is, it's not the uh, part of counting the individuals, but it's getting our maps ready to make it easier and quicker 
faster. So when they do go out to count people, our maps are set. It saves tax dollars, it saves money. This is a great way that they could start applying right now. Absolutely, and, and Jesse, and, and we were just talk, talking about job opportunities. My goodness, especially now with the economy the way it is, and uh, the fact that not only will you can have your own employment opportunities, but you're also, again, bringing yes. $1,300 to the pockets of each person in, a, annually. Anything you'd like to add there, Jesse, to, to the? There are a number comment? of uh, jobs that are available out there. I believe there's an, probably around 16,000 that will we'll be looking for here just in the state of Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, we, there's from uh, office clerks, uh, office supervisors, we have field office supervisors, we have um, listers that are going out there door to door, and then we're gonna have crew leaders that are actually in charge of all of those that are going from house to house or door to door. So there are and many. Are, are the opportunities uh, for folks who would see this as a supplemental to a full-time job? Because a lot of folks are looking for second jobs nowadays. They can, and okay. it's, it's all temporary, Both. Yeah. but there are part-time and full-time, but it's still temporary because the census you know, will end. So there are many opportunities for individuals where they want to just supplement their, their income or if they don't have any income and they need to work, mm -hmm. or if it's in between uh, two different jobs, there's mm -hmm. that opportunity. And Jesse, we've got about a minute left, but I do want to ask the obvious here. It's 2008, it's about the end of the year, but why now, why are we starting so early if this is the 2010 census? Well, the whole U.S. has to start, and we need to have that number on April 1st. So we all need to get together, we need to be able to employ all of these individuals, and they need to be trained prior to that time, so it takes us plenty of time to get all that information together to get everyone ready for that day. So it's a big, important uh, machine. It's got to get, get rolling. I want to thank both of you for being on. It's been a great discussion. I appreciate it. Again, uh, uh, Jesse Nino, who's a local census office manager with the Census Bureau. Jesse, thank you for being on the program. Thank also you. had Angel Rocha, who's a partnership specialist with the Census Bureau. Thank you, Angel, for My being pleasure. on the program. Really appreciate it. And thank you for watching Government Connection. My name is Miguel Ortega. <laughs>